Welcome to this Tutor to You topic video that looks at the Indus River Basin System, which is an example of large scale agriculture. This is part of Paper 2, Unit C, The Challenge of Resource Management. The Indus River flows through Pakistan to the Arabian Sea. It has a huge river basin covering around 1 million square kilometres, including parts of India and China. The river is fed by heavy rain and snowmelt and is a really important source of water for both India and Pakistan, providing plenty of water for irrigation in the drier land further south. As a result, the Indus Water Treaty was signed in 1960 to give India control of the eastern rivers within the basin and Pakistan the Indus itself and the western tributaries. So what is the Indus River Basin System, also known as IBIS? The IBIS is a huge irrigation system. It is the largest continuous system in the world. It was initially built when this area was part of the British Empire and started off as a series of irrigation canals, but it has been expanded over time. There are now three large dams and more than 100 small dams that control the flow of the water, with three huge reservoirs behind the main dams, including the Tarbala Dam, which you can see on the screen, and a reservoir which can hold 11 billion cubic metres of water. Water is transferred between rivers through 12 major link canals. In addition, there are 64,000 kilometres of minor canals distributing water across the countryside, and more than 1.6 million kilometres of streams and ditches that are used to irrigate farmland in Pakistan. The IBIS was constructed for a number of reasons. Firstly, the region is pretty arid with low and unreliable rainfall, which cannot meet the demands of local food production. Before the IBIS, food security was an issue due to the rapidly growing population, whereas now food can be grown on a large scale, so there is less need to import foods from other countries. Secondly, the IBIS has also helped with economic development by increasing farm productivity through irrigation and using dams to generate hydroelectric power to provide the energy needed to develop industries. This has enabled Pakistan to become a newly emerging economy. Finally, the IBIS is important for water management as the dams regulate the flow of water, reducing the risk of flooding, which has been an issue along the Indus River, as you can see in the aftermath of flooding here on the screen. The reservoirs also store water where there is a plentiful supply following snowmelt or monsoon rains to use at times when supply is low. There are many benefits of the Indus River Basin System. It has increased the amount of land available for agriculture by 40%, which means food security has increased significantly and the system actually irrigates over 40 million hectares of land. Food supply has been boosted with huge increases in crop yields. Wheat yields have increased by 36%, rice by 39% and fruit by 150%. People in this region now have access to a wider variety of nutritional foods, so their diets and health have vastly improved. This includes the increased availability of fish, which are farmed in storage reservoirs. Farming has increased export revenue with cash crops grown. The IBIS provides many job opportunities, including increased jobs in farming, but also in hydroelectric power generation. And that hydroelectric power provides green energy to use in industries that will aid Pakistan's economic development. Finally, water management reduces the risk of flooding and it increases the ability to store water, which aids climate change resilience. However, there are several drawbacks to this large-scale agricultural development. So what are the drawbacks of the IBIS? Well, some farmers upstream take more than their fair share, which leads to over-abstraction. This reduces the amount of water available downstream and affects food production there. There is lots of evaporation due to the intense heat in the summer, and this leads to high levels of water loss. Poor irrigation techniques leads to water wastage as well as waterlogging and salinity and these both cause long-term damage to the soil which reduces fertility. The reservoirs, barrages and canals all need constant maintenance and this is very expensive. 
The ibis depends on snowmelt and the monsoon rains. Climate change in the future may affect these, reducing the water available. There has also been significant displacement of local communities. The dams have flooded large valleys, meaning the loss of homes and farmland for many people. The dams disrupt the natural flow of rivers and leads to sedimentation, as well as interrupting fish migration. And finally, dams also affect the depth of the water, with the reservoir being much deeper than the original river. This means the water is much colder, which could affect the marine habitat, with animals unable to adapt to the change in temperature. This could lower biodiversity. That concludes this Tutor to You topic video focusing on the Indus River Basin System, Casely. Thank you for watching.